let's do some news. My name is Mike B, a.k.a. Phony. Today's date is October 30th, Halloween tomorrow. Uh, the time is 3.17 p.m. I'm joined here by my Yanks. <laughs> <laughs> and some other folks too some other folks <laughs> and today today we're gonna talk about uh <laughs> we're gonna cook over some 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 uh some yank news uh <laughs> with some yankee companies oh god <laughs> and uh we're gonna we're gonna start with uh, just one leaf this is one leaf that's right all right we're gonna start with uh, probably the most hilarious news of the year <laughs> of the, uh, of the, at least if you were recently laid off by blizzard, at least it's probably the most, most hilarious to you. Uh, we are, <laughs> Shh, that's enough. <laughs> Activision blizzard reports 1.95 billion in revenue for quarter three, 2020, and they need to hire 2000 people. Whoa, that's great news. For, for a budding company like Activision Blizzard to be growing so much that they need to hire more people. I love to see these young, small indie devs just grow and thrive and create jobs for all these people. It's amazing. So, <laughs> it's all bullshit. Unless you need, like I said on Twitter, if you need a seasonal job... Hit these guys up. They'll probably get you in there for at least a couple months before their next quarterly earnings report and they had to lay everybody off again. <sighs> so, they need to hire about 2,000 people. They did indeed, they did indeed lay off some people just recently. Just recently. We covered it, actually. It was uh, like 300 people or something like that. Yeah, 300 people uh, in Versailles where they laid off a bunch of people. This was a, um, <clears throat> I think they mostly handle customer service in the EU and I'm um, calling this off the top of my head. Uh, they did a lot of translation and stuff like that for titles out there. Um, and so they had, they lost, you know, like 300 people there. They closed that office. Um, exactly. Era. A and last year, was it last year? Or was it this year? Anyway, so last year, um, they laid off like 800 people. Uh, Zarina was one of them. I mean, there's a lot of them, just to name off the top of my head, but still. There was, they they laid off a ton of people, and it was, I believe, just in time for like a quarterly earnings report or something like that, and it just felt wrong. Uh, it just felt wrong. And so, they always dump their CS and QA people and it freaking shows. Exactly. We need to hire more people. Get the expendables. It, it, it seriously is very much it feels like an expendable like you're expendable when you work there it can't be good for optics like this really cannot be good for optics like for them to come out and they had great i mean for the shareholders this is amazing you know if you have blizzard stock I mean, i'm sure it's going up and that's great actually is it hold on a second let me take a look let me check my let me check my robin hood let me see where we're at but if you have blizzard stock it's probably going up let me see act -na 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 -na. if i get any connection um Activision Blizzard in general is not good for optics. Yeah, get get uh, rid of them so you can rehire them for half the price. That's that's what it feels like. It's like you had all these employees who have been here for such a long, long time. Uh, yeah, Blizzard stock has indeed gone up. Uh, well, since the last time I checked, which is a long time ago. Um, I'm waiting for the chart to load here. But you know, they they had all these people on board who were with the company for years and years and years and they you know their pay increasingly goes up uh and then what happens is they reach the they reach the point to where you know they end up having to uh, uh cut them to rehire them again maybe uh for lesser pay um <clears throat> so yeah let me see a year ago a year ago today they were at 50 55 dollars this is about when i had i had stock in blizzard around that time about 55 dollars uh and now it's at 75 dollars so they've they have definitely, especially, it uh, looks like at the beginning, oh yeah, of course, at the beginning of um, uh, of quarantine for like the US uh, and the world, really, sorry, um, their stock just skyrocketed. They were at, they were at $50, $60 again around the beginning of the pandemic, and then they shot up to a high of 80, uh, August 7th, $82, and they've been cruising around that $75. So their their new standard right now seems to be between $75 and $85. So they've definitely gone up a good 30-something percent there. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's just high AT. Oh yeah, sorry, I guess I could have done that. I'm just, sorry, I'll just, re I'll just tell you guys the numbers, okay? Uh, but, 
Activision, they they are a business. They have to run things like a business. People be damned. <laughs> People be fucking damned. You always have it when Mike can figure out my crappy typing thing. Oh yeah, I got you. Um uh, People who have been in the company longer and a role longer have a higher expectation for money plus percentage gains year on year. Cheaper to rehire. It's true. And you know, it's like, you know, it also is worrisome. Like you feel like, um, you feel like if you get a raise somewhere, you have to think, is this bringing me one step closer to getting laid off? Potentially. Um, Bobby needs his 17th yacht. Yeah. It's a business of the dumb excuse. I'll never understand why people use it and accept it. Well, it's, it's capitalism <laughs> this is what it is. The best thing that we could do if we want to show them that we're not appreciative of the stuff that they do and how they handle their personnel and all that stuff is just not buy their games. Um, and you know what? A lot of times this stuff just ends up remedying itself. There's only so long Call of Duty can continue to release the same shit. I mean, I understand that they're making change. You know, there's, there's some some campaigns are better than others, but you can't say that every release of Call of Duty has been amazing. They've had their fair share of flops. Um and so there's only so long they could go before they reach a point where people are going to be like, you know what? I'm just kind of tired of playing this game every fucking year. I'm just kind of over it. Uh, they're they're trying they're running Call of Duty like FIFA or like NBA or like whatever. Like they're trying to run it like that. Um, Bobby, another interview. I don't see why people keep putting devil horns on me. <laughs> people not buying the 20th WoW expansion. Yeah, I mean some of their games are going to lose steam eventually. Uh, you know, there is Shadowlands coming up. We'll talk about that in a second, but there's Shadowlands coming up and we'll see if the, you know, how that ends up faring. Um, what do you do? It's a hundred percent brand new game every single year. Yeah. I love that. We talked about, it, I think it was the last week or week before we talked about, uh, FIFA. Um, God, who was it? Was it Kotaku or somebody? Somebody just basically used the same exact, uh, review because the game was exactly the same. They just changed the roster. And so they just gave them the same. They just like literally just repasted the entire goddamn review. It was brilliant. Um, Lots of gamers don't want to see uh, see how the sausage is made. <laughs> yeah, wow. Uh, what's weirdest to me is the flops of the Call of Duty games where they actually changed it. People want the same game over and over again. It's messed. Uh, oh, sorry. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get there. We'll get there. That was IGN. Oh, that's right. It was IGN. That was IGN. Um, <clears throat> speaking of people who have left... See, you know, you're fucking with my segues. Speaking of people who have left Blizzard, Chris Metzen... The, uh, uh, uh obviously a, a favorite, an old time favorite at Blizzard. Um, he is starting a new gaming company, a board gaming company <laughs> called War Chief Gaming. And they actually had this article up and it's actually, you know, it's really touching. Like, I know that we have like this, this fantasy of what it must have been like to work at Blizzard in the early days when Mike Morheim had his fro and, and, and it was just him and Metzen and all the other guys just like playing in the band or whatever, like in the studio and then going back and working on, uh, working on content. Like this was like it, watching this video, it was, it really played into that. It's like, man, like you, you really feel for what you, you appreciate what Chris Metzen has done. And you also feel for the struggles that he's been dealing with, right? Uh, and he talks about it in this article, in this interview. It's a really good interview. I'll just read you some of the quotes here. Um, so it says, it feels more like, and this is a weird analogy, but it feels like we're in a garage band again, as opposed to this giant symphony orchestra trying to account for the complexity of all these masterclass musicians. We've been on big stages and now we're back in the garage playing punk rock that we played as kids. It feels awesome. For all of my nervousness, I know we're on the right track. And he adds, we're going to come out with, and make some cool shit. Maybe we'll find the audience. That would be great. Maybe we won't. I don't know. But oh God, I'm having fun again, jamming with my friends and hooking these ridiculous ideas and these crazy worlds. I needed this in my life. He's been pretty open about dealing with stress and anxiety and stuff like that uh, over you know working with Blizzard and, all, and whatnot. Um, and he even says in the interview, he does say that he... He, ended, he he left and he feels like he kind of left suddenly, right? Like he just reached a point where he just felt like he was grinding his, he was just grinding. What do you say? He said like, I was grinding down my transmission, the gears of my transmission. I had nothing left. And he just felt like he was just going through the motions, imposter syndrome, just kind of going through and just being that Chris Metzen that everybody wanted him to be and not really being himself anymore. And then he ended up just checking out one day and just left. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so he's now 
He's back. Took a four-year break. He had a kid around four years ago. Good timing to take time off. Um, and now he's back. I mean, even looking at the thumbnail, you could tell the dude's happy. <laughs> uh, let's see. I, I, I recommend going through and watching this video later on, by the way. It's really good. I, I watched it. I was just like, I'm just going to take some notes on this. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> It was so wholesome. It was so wholesome. So yeah, I I look forward to him. Uh, even though I'm not I'm not a tabletop guy, but I know some people are BL Tank, uh, and others are. So this is you know this for for those of you guys who are you know World of Warcraft fa fans and uh, and obviously you know, by proxy Chris Metzen fans, uh, and you also are big tabletop fans. Boy, <laughs> boy, you guys are. Just in for a treat. So he he said my name. <laughs> he, <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> he, uh, he said that they they don't have anything to announce right now, but over the next month or so, you should start seeing some um, some information on uh, what it is that they plan on uh, on releasing some of these worlds that they're crafting together uh, at War Chief Gaming Tabletop Company. Pretty awesome. So yeah, we got Mike Morheim's got his own thing going on. We got Chris Metzen's got his own thing going on. Like this is great. I'm real. I'm really loving seeing this. Uh, you know, these guys who have departed from these these people who have made the games that a lot of us have grown up with, right? Whether you started with World of Warcraft or Warcraft Three or Tides of Darkness or 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 Rock and Roll Racing, which is what I did. That was my. I didn't know it was a Blizzard game. I just liked the game. Uh, and then later, find out, I was like, "What? They made Rock and Roll Racing? That's awesome!" Uh, yeah, like no matter how far back you go, like if you have a history with these guys, like I, I, I personally, as not a tabletop guy, I'm looking forward to what he's doing. It's nice to see um, people are getting out of uh, out of Blizzard and getting getting more creative. You know, they're 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 just gonna try their own stuff, just try their own shit. Chris Metzen and Mike Morheim don't have to cater to you know, to, uh, to fucking Zoomers, right? They catered to us, and they know it. That, that That's the content they're going to be making. I'm sure the product they're going to be putting out is going to be stuff that's going to be geared not towards, you know, people who are in maybe early 20s or whatever, which I'm sure there's none of you here, <laughs> but they're going to be catering to people who are, you know, their age, because they have the freedom to do so. They don't have, they're not going to have a board. They have three people, three full-time people working for them, at War Chief uh, Tabletop Company, um, War Chief Gaming, I should call it, but uh, they're like three full-time people, so it's like, who's going to tell them, hey, you should probably make this a little more accessible for younger folks? Fuck off! <laughs> so, yeah, is it get away from Activision, really? Yes. Uh, he really does look happy. He does. The interview is really great. I highly recommend going and taking time to watch. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Uh, we'll be interested to see this version of them, Lessons Learned version. Uh, we a bunch of boomer yanks in here today. <laughs> D2 and W3 Frozen Throne. You turn 26 tomorrow, so mid 20s. There you go. Yeah. When I say when I say like Zoomers, I I think that that mostly caters to like what like the uh, like the teens right now through like 20 or something like that, right? Uh, I'm not actually sure what the what the age barrier is, the bookends is for that. But happy birthday, by the way. Happy birthday, 26. Yeah. Nothing special is going to happen at 26. At 25, your insurance goes down a little bit. 21, you can start drinking. At 18, you can start smoking and voting. At 16, you get a driver's license. But uh, 26 is just a year, dude. <laughs> I'm not trying to steal a funder or anything. You still have a great time, right? You can still drink and do whatever. It's great. But, you know. Um, Smokey is 21. Is Smokey 21? Oh, wait, wait. No, wait. I'm well, not here. Come on. Uh, <laughs> many thanks. I'm still not American. Like, you could you could drink at 16 here? Ah, oh, well, shit. Well, shit. You got nothing to look forward to anymore. <laughs> you got nothing to look forward to anymore. <laughs> now they're just numbers. <laughs> and remember that when you hit 40, okay? They're just numbers. That's all. They're just numbers. All right. Is it 21 in California to smoke? I didn't know that. Wow, they changed it 21. I didn't. I had no idea. That didn't stop anybody from smoking in high school, though. They had a they had a smoking section in high school, for fuck's sake. I guess it was illegal to purchase. That's what it was. It was illegal to purchase, but not illegal to smoke. That's probably what it was. I don't know. At 19, we could order weed online and drink up here in still Mexico. Dang. Man. 
I'd be sneaky with that shit when you were a kid. Well, I was a kid, man. Same when I was 16, I was able to drink in Netherlands. It was 18 years old. I always, I always knew about, about Netherlands being like, you could go there and do anything at age 14. I was like, whoa, that's awesome. I'm going to totally go there. It's like, no, I'm not. Like ever. One day though. Um, anyways, news, 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 news. So speaking of World of Warcraft, we'll go and jump back on some, uh, jump back on into the, into the wow. Um, wow. Look at this release dates. Enter the Shadowlands on November 23rd this year. This year. Uh, so, spending the holidays with family and friends, leveling in November, <laughs> raiding in December. Yeah, this is definitely going to put a bit of a damper on some folks' plans, especially if you had already set aside time, uh, whether it be through your employer or through your family or whatever, to, to basically level in WoW and do whatever in WoW. Now, Maybe this is Blizzard trying really hard to keep us all safe during the pandemic. They know if they could get enough of you to not go to a family event because you're busy playing WoW, they could save lives. They could save lives. So you see, Blizzard is looking out for the folks. They are maybe not their employees, but at least the common man. You know, the common nerd. <laughs> <laughs> plans meeting family for the holidays during a pandemic that's why you gotta live in a bubble for like two weeks where you can do anything for fuck's sake look at look at kardashians look at the kardashians all you gotta do is just stay in a bubble and then you could get an island and go and have a great time and it's awesome it could be like nothing it could be like it was before ah uh, you can have a crummy thanksgiving food anytime what crummy rhoda what are you talking about food is amazing it's amazing um I see the new CEO Blizzard thinking that we are keeping the people keep us safe. That's what they're doing. Uh, how long uh, did you have the the coof the coof like a week? It took me like eight days in February. Uh, I know I, my 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 symptoms lasted, and I still have some, uh, but most of them subsided entirely. Um, the the brain fog is the one that sticks around forever, and it's so weird. It just like you you could just be working on something and focusing, and all of a sudden, whomp, just gone, just gone, just disconnect. Um, weird but uh otherwise though yeah it was like a week it was like a uh, 10 days from the beginning of my symptoms no it was, it was like 12 days beginning of symptoms to the end of my the majority of my symptoms um but anyway so <clears throat> and a hologram of your dead dead praising your husband who commissioned it that's right yes oh my god where's that link i have that link somewhere hold on i'm gonna find it i gotta find it i have to find this oh my god so yes kanye west loving husband to kim kardashian um, made a made a uh, a hologram, right? You know, they had the island and all that good stuff. They went and did that. Uh, it's a hologram, uh, and in this holo is a hologram of uh of of Kim Kardashian's father, right? Which is precious, right? Uh, I can't find the clip. Oh, I can't find the actual clip. Um, but in it, in it, her her father says that you married the most 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 genius man ever kanye west it was like what the fuck what the fuck like is it does his narcissism just have no bounds he can't he can't not i mean maybe it's a joke maybe it's a joke between the two of them maybe it's like a thing it's like oh this is just funny between the two of them but come on news tangent shh we could do that. We could do that here. Come on. <sighs> Anyways, so back to this. So, um, uh, what were we talking about? World of Warcraft. Yes. So, Shadowlands is dropping November 23rd of this year, uh, Thanksgiving Eve, and uh, which means it's gonna drop. You know, this was like 3 p.m. Uh, PST. So, uh, there's no Black Friday shopping or anything like that. So you could probably and you could skip family dinner and do all and just basically just level, I guess, just play. Um, for those of you guys who don't have any family plans, uh, which is probably a lot of you guys, uh, a lot of, um, a lot of folks are not going to get together for the holidays. Um, then this is actually a really good day. Like I know it's, it's easy to say that's fucked up. They're putting on a holiday, but in terms of a pandemic, when most people are not going to be getting together anyways, but still are going to have four days off. I mean, I think that's, uh, I mean, I, I think that's that's good <laughs> that's good man uh, 
And you have no plans for Thanksgiving? Yeah, look at the raid dates and classic raid dates. Oh, I didn't look at the raid dates. Uh, although I did see somebody actually linked this thing uh, uh, earlier down here. It says, yeah, this didn't last very long. This is pretty funny. It says, during the holiday season, this is uh, 2019, November last year. During the holiday season, we want to be considerate of our players with the release timing of new content. Many guilds are still progressing through the Eternal Palace, and we want to give them enough time to finish the raid and earn the cutting edge, blah, 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 uh, before opening a new raid. We try to avoid releasing new content tiers during the holiday season so that players are not encouraged to choose between progression and spending time with their families and friends. Uh, this also helps ensure us that we're fully staffed to support any required hotfixes or, or turning issues that may this should be tuning issues uh, that may emerge. So, or the countries that don't celebrate Christian holidays. Oh no, yeah, yeah. Obviously, I'm speaking on behalf of uh, of of the Yanks. Um, but yeah, it's uh, we try. They try. <laughs> <laughs> they tried they tried uh you know what it's from a business perspective this makes a lot of sense they know that a lot of people are gonna have those four days off in the states right uh they fucking know so of course they're gonna release it on the 23rd because that's where they're gonna have the highest player turnout uh and then and then and then they're going to report back, mark my fucking words. They're going to be like, this is the highest num player numbers that we've had at a launch for, for a, an expansion since, and they'll name some some iconic one like Wrath of the Lich King or something like that, uh, or Mop or something. Like they're, they'll, That's what's going to happen. They're, they're betting on getting those numbers, getting those numbers up so fucking high because everyone's going to be home uh, and they're going to have like several days to play. And they'll say the first weekend they're gonna have highest play. Thank you, the highest pandemic player count ever. That's what they're. That's what they're banking on. They're plan. They're. They want to pad those numbers. Get those rookie numbers up. Those are rookie numbers, man. They're gonna get them up. It's all about the MAUs, right? Monthly active users. Wrath getting thrown out of the bus. <laughs> say that their service gonna add the high waiting times to get on service. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Although I'm sure they've gotten better at over the years, but I haven't seen. A, I haven't seen a launch in a long time. Um, interesting. It's on a Monday. Uh, instead of a Tuesday, is that what the twenty third is? A, is a is is a Wednesday? Um, for that investor report, that's right. They've also comped the new uh, rate. Oh, you know, speaking of seventy seven, um, yeah, actually, <laughs> I these guys were in a standoff for the longest time of who's gonna announce that they were releasing first, and uh, it turns out it was Cyberpunk that. Push back their date um, before announcing, yeah, basically before announcing that, uh, well, she's the yellow. Jesus Christ. <sighs> Anyways, so they, so Cyberpunk devs, uh, they released this. You all know what this is. You've seen this. They, <laughs> the black, the black text on yellow is now forever, forever tarnished. Anybody that posts anything that's black text on yellow, it's cursed. It's cursed. It's done. It's like a yellow. It's kind of more of like a, um, kind of like it's like a, it's like a canary it's like a canary yellow right yeah, it's like a canary yellow leaning more towards orange but yeah wow that's a lot of yellow um <clears throat> i'm looking a bit jaundiced i know i'm so sorry <laughs> so it says hey everyone today we've decided to move the release date of cyberpunk 2077 by 21 days the new release date is December 10th. Most likely, there are many emotions and questions in your head, so first and foremost, please accept our humble apologies. The biggest challenge for us right now is shipping the game to current gen, next gen, and PC at the same time. Da -da 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 -da. Since Cyberpunk 2077 uh, evolved towards almost being a next gen title somewhere along the way, we need to make sure that everything works well and every every version runs smoothly. Uh, we are aware it may seem unrealistic when some says that 21 days can't make any difference on such a massive and complex game, but... There is such a thing as day one patches, and this one's probably going to be pretty significant, so y'all bitches better clear up your monthly bandwidth allocation and uh, and be ready for this one. So some of you may also be wondering what these words mean in light of us saying we achieved gold masters some time ago. Passing certi uh, certification or going gold means the game is ready, can be completed, and all has all content in it. But it doesn't mean we stop working on it and raising the quality bar. So yes, uh, we won't we won't crunch. Yeah, we won't crunch. Uh, why the death threats, people? Can we please stop? Uh, that we know game companies move stuff. Yeah. Highlighter yellow. Yeah, it is. Like a highlight. Yeah, more of that green kind of. Yeah, totally. Um, Black Desert Online made a funny, a little funny about this. Announced they had important. 
uh, an important and um, <laughs> uh, something important to say or whatever. They put that in. Yeah, I've seen a couple of companies do that where they just release just the yellow with the uh, we just we just put our logo on on a yellow background or something like that. It's so funny. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a thing for a while, at least till the game launches, and maybe even after that. <clears throat> but yeah, there's a lot of folks who are understandably frustrated by this but i think at the same time there's a lot of folks who are just like make the game make the game work make the game work make it right make it the best they could possibly um it could possibly be because because i mean this game is hyped to no end it is hyped to no fucking end it's gonna it's if this game fails like it's gonna be the biggest failure of 2020 there are people who are, cannot wait to call it the biggest failure of 2020 just so they could put that on their YouTube title or something, right? Or the article title. People who who make a business of this, right? Where they just like, they're gonna, they're waiting, they're like, oh, I can't wait for this game to release so I can say it sucks, it's gonna be great. I <laughs> uh, see, make it work, stop saying unrealistic dates for devs. Don't just support Keanu with a bad game, right? Uh, didn't Cyberpunk 2077 win an award for most anticipated game? Exactly, the clickbait. Yeah, delayed game will eventually be good. A bad game will be bad forever. You know, I mean, Draven. Yes, that's I. I that's that's a phrase from something else, right? But uh, yes, a bad game will be bad forever. For some people, like No Man's Sky. Some people look at No Man's Sky, and I bring this every fucking time. Every fucking time, talk about games getting good. I always bring up No Man's Sky. Uh, but for some folks. They still are like, no, I'm not going to play that game. That game sucks. And and not so much that it sucks now, but like because it left such a bad taste in their mouth, they're just like, I'm not going to play that. Um, like, why would they do that to themselves? So, or betray themselves like that. Uh, but that is a game that eventually did, you know, get better. But for some folks, it's bad forever. Um, you're that folk. Yeah, Fallout 76. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Fallout 76. Could actually be amazing right now, and I'll never know because I'll never go and play it again. Let me get rid of that. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Just boop, boop. <laughs> uh, you see a lot of people yelling at them for cut to, to cut support for current gen consoles. You know, twenty seventy seven was announced before current gen consoles were released. Oh, they want them to cut supports for. Um, wait, are we are we considering? No, they're not released yet, so they're not current gen. Okay, so they're next gen still. Okay. Uh, Cyberpunk, best game 2020 next week. The problem with Cyberpunk next week. What promises weren't fulfilled in Cyberpunk? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It just put a bad taste in my mouth. Her Fallout 76 is playable now. It's not, uh, so not good, but it's okay. There was a story that uh, it's ready for PC, but consoles are delaying it. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I mean, they make the game on PC. <laughs> they, they build it on PC, so I wouldn't be surprised if PC is the one that works the best. Um, Granted, it's still going to be, I mean, we know that it'll work on PC, but will it work with all the different configurations? That's going to be the biggest, that's always the biggest gamble with uh, with PC games. It's like all the testing and all the all the different combinations of hardware and all the things that can be run in the background and all just so much crap. Whereas with an Xbox or with a you know, PS4, it's like, you just know. You just know. Uh, the recertification time is 21 days for certain consoles. So the theory is that's why the 21 day delay. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Uh, the bad taste is from promising than not delivering on time. It makes waves for more companies to abuse that practice to bank on dollars a la early access anyways. That's right. Absolutely. No ha-ha. <laughs> no ha-ha. You're right, Top. Absolutely. <clears throat> you last you heard it was uh, current gen is holding cyberpunk. Probably. Probably. They do have a recertification time of, like, forever. Um, so... Last week we talked about, and this is this story dropped the like the day of or the day after we did our last news show, and uh, I was a little upset, but I'm really glad that we waited because there's a lot of stuff tied into this. So, 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 so. Oh, hold on a second. Fallout 76 this week. It's on Game Pass. It's not better. I couldn't heal. It took five minutes to activate a quest item. Granted, it's better than when I first tried it, but before, before if I wanted to play, and the sound was fucked, I had to reinstall my video drivers every time. But came out. Well, shit. Sounds like it sucks. Ah. <sighs> <clears throat> Okay, so the RIAA, which is a recording industry, something, something, uh, Association of America, uh, it is a or artist association. Um, they they basically have license to like 
pretty much all music. Between them and the Recording Academy and the National Music Publishers Association uh, and a couple others, like, it's mostly the RIAA. Uh, and they are on a fucking rampage lately. Uh, we know that one of the reasons why Vodpocalypse happened was because the RIAA was stepping in on Twitch and saying, hey, you can't just have these dudes just running around playing music from anybody and let's not get paid for it. And so they ended up uh, doing the, uh, you know, basically putting out the preliminary DMCA and just say, hey, if you have any content, you're going to have to remove it because the RIAA is going to be kicking in and that and they don't fuck around. You could lose your account. And that's why everybody deleted VODs, myself included. Um so it was, uh, so it's, it doesn't stop there. They have also now attacked Twitch's new service that they, they built specifically, specifically to, uh, to combat this or to, 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 uh, abide by these new rules, uh, by getting licenses and all that using the soundtrack app. And I think we may have mentioned it last week. It may have come up. Um, but soundtrack is supposed to be a, a licensed music ser you know, service that you can use on Twitch. So you know that music is played, that you can play music. Uh, the end user can hear the music, but I guess it won't show up in the VOD. So it was a great tool to basically keep your, your VODs music free. Um, just for, just for licenses that you get to, so you get to, yeah, exactly. So, uh, they, they hit them and they said, you didn't get the right licenses. You didn't do this. You didn't do this. They're like, you didn't do anything right. Ah, and they started coming down on them. So it says right here, let me read this. Uh, it says, <clears throat> they basically say Twitch isn't doing enough. So it says, uh, a letter obtained by Variety accuses the service of failing to secure the proper sync and mechanical licenses for its recently launched soundtrack tool, as well as, quote, allowing and enabling its streamers to use our respective members' music without authorization in violation of Twitch's music guidelines, among other claims. The platform was primarily used for gaming until COVID-19 pandemic when its music live streams began to surge. Uh, it's always been used for music live streams. It's just nice to be able to throw in there that maybe got bigger during the pandemic. But we know that music's been around on Twitch for a very long time. 8-Bit Drummer, Jovian, Top. Lots of people have been doing music on, on this service for a long time. Um... He says, music guys would set up a deal with Twitch so they could get money and, and don't get bad press. Or maybe because there is so many, or there are so many artists on Twitch making music, just make a label. Riot has its own fucking label. Why can't Twitch just make a label? Make a label, come up with some deals or whatever, license Monster Cat stuff, and just fucking sign people and then get that music out. There's so much great music made by musicians who just do this shit from the bedroom and they just stream it. Proto star comes to mind. Uh, just, just sign their stuff. And that way you could just put it out to folks, uh, and let them play it. He said, uh, you already have Amazon music. Just add onto that. No, so that's the thing. So that's, so when you talk about sync and mechanical licenses, what they're talking about is, Licenses that say how many times you could play a song and to how many people on a broadcast. Okay, so these licenses are important because they usually come in like ten thousand. Like they start at like ten thousand uh, listens, right, or ten thousand people. So you can't just you can't just say you know well it's Amazon use Amazon Music because Amazon Music has license for individuals to play their music, not for individuals to broadcast that that music to any number of people so leverage the platform i mean i'm sure amazon music is trying to work something out but it's clear that the riaa wants to be i mean they want to be greedy here and we have other stuff to talk about with them then you'll see what i'm talking about uh but yes they they want they want broadcast rights the way they've always had broadcast rights. Like they want licenses the way they've done it for TV and they want it for the average streamer. That's what they, that's their goal is to be able to look at somebody like Shroud who may get like 20,000 viewers. And if he plays a song, then he has to pay for the 20,000 views, 20,000 listens on that. So that's what they fucking want. And that is an archaic system that doesn't work for the average streamer. And so that's what they're saying here. Specifically, they're saying that Twitch has failed to secure the proper sync and mechanical licenses. So that's what they're leaning towards. They want them to 
to pay for licenses for hundreds of millions of viewers, you know, a month or whatever, a year. Uh, that's what they're looking for. And <clears throat> this is definitely going to get bigger than this. This is absolutely going to get bigger than this. Because, like I said last week, if you take away all of this licensed music, you take away a lot of the character that is some of these streamers. And if you take away some of that character from some of these streamers, and we all start playing the same fucking music all the time, right? From the same pool of like licensed royalty free music or whatever, then all of a sudden all of your all of your content becomes homogenized. And now and now you look at it's like, wow, this is all the same. Like like again, the example I used last week was when you watch any other like any random vlog on YouTube, and you're gonna hear like the same music across several of them. And it's just like, okay, because they pull from the same from the same pool of the same collection of uh, of licensed music, royalty free music, not royalty, but licensed music through YouTube. So this is something that Twitch really wants to fight. They 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 need to do something about this, or Amazon. They really need to do something about this because going down this path of not allowing us to play any music at all um, without risking losing your channel is going to really hurt twitch i mean first off music there's a lot of music streams that probably just aren't streaming music right now because they're afraid they're going to get nailed uh as a matter of fact there are some folks who are trying to find workarounds here creative workarounds uh but uh i mean let me just show you Life finds a way. <laughs> and apparently, so do streamers. Can't play licensed music, so you gotta do the next best thing. But this is where, this is where, I mean, you know, I, I, I joke, but that is where we're going. If we can't play, and I get it, I trust me, as a musician, like, I, I totally understand that it feels like you're, st you're stealing from the artist by playing their music on your stream or whatever. But the same argument can be made for musicians that can be made for indie developers, right? It's like, if you play their game, like, I don't know, Among Us, uh, and that game ends up selling fucking millions of copies, uh, are you gonna, are you gonna be mad that somebody's playing your game on Twitch without buying a performance license like Alex Hutchinson thinks we should all have? Uh, probably not. You might just let this one slide. And the same thing goes with music. Like I discovered a ton of music listening to listening to Jovian. Uh like like years ago. He would stream every almost every night. And I I found so much great music through him. And then even Top, listen to Top like a couple weeks ago. Uh I found a whole lot of great drum and bass I didn't even know existed. <laughs> like it's it's fantastic. Yeah, streamers are a tool that the RIAA should be utilizing. If anything, the RIAA should be paying the fucking streamers to pay to play their music the same way that companies pay Instagram influencers to pimp their shit. Games on Twitch are free PR for the game, good or bad. A ton of people will never think about buying a game until a Twitch streamer plays it. Exactly. You're basically giving them free advertising for the music industry. So out of touch. Absolutely. Absolutely. They want to sell more CDs, guys. Come on. The guitarist from Dragon Force get taken out for playing his own music. I I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> In fairness, if the music is like a 5% volume uh, backing bed compared to the game taking up 90% of the screen, I think the music has less case to be made for you exposing people to music. Well... There, yes, of course, there's going to be you could find these cases where it's like, OK, well, well, it's only played at a certain amount. It's not loud enough. So you shouldn't you play it at all. Yeah, you can find cases like this for sure. But in general, though, we're talking about like a bit drummer. We're talking about Jovian. We're talking about DJs in general. These are guys who who dig and they find music that they like and they play that music for you guys. And what happens? You turn on, you add it to your Spotify playlist. So you're actually contributing revenue to the to these these record labels. Hi, babe. <laughs> Thank you so much. Cheers. How many times have I brought, brought games because of your any for breakfast? Exactly. Exactly. Again, the same case can be made for that. Um, it's a margarita and I almost dropped it. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's a margarita. 
What if you could uh, link Amazon Music outside of the stream itself, like a link to me? Kind of, yeah, kind of like um, YouTube has that, where like a song plays and it'll tell you underneath the video what the, what the song is. Is that a new CD store? Don't drop it, I know. Uh, check out the Drop Frames episode with Mike Shinoda. It's got some interesting um, perspectives from someone inside the industry who also tries to stream on Twitch. I'll have to watch that. This is not the first time that it's been brought up, but I will have to watch that for sure. Um, because, like I said last time, like Mike Shinoda has definitely got lots of you know, industry experience, of course. Um, I'm curious what his thoughts are on this. From my perspective, I feel like either Twitch needs to just make a label... Twitch needs to make a label and just tell and just tell the RAA to fuck off. It's like fine, we'll do, we'll run your DMCA's. We'll tell our people not to play your music, and that'll be that. And then when the RAA sees that they're not they're not selling CDs like they used to, then they're gonna come up with something bad, something different. They're gonna come up with a solution. Uh, this is like Napster. Napster that evolves into like you know Kaza or Spotify. Like there's like a fork there, right? Um, they're gonna come up with some way to make it work. They have to. They have to evolve. This is definitely an example of the RAA just falling behind on tech uh attacking things that they don't need to attack and you know it doesn't stop there um <laughs> well first off this is the kind of shit that's happening so this is jake and jake and bake he's a uh, uh he is a an irl streamer predominantly an irl streamer walks around town uh walks around i don't know where is he i think he's in japan i'm not sure um but i know he travels around and he just walks around just irl streamer just typical right um and he guy says, just to be clear, this is a 30 second clip from two and a half years ago. It was an it was from an outdoor IRL stream. I probably passed by a shop or was in a place that was playing a song in the background. And now I'm in danger of losing everything. How is this even realistic? Um, real quick, it says, uh, I feel the problem also isn't black and white. Some people want to share what they like and that's good, while others uh, want to use something because it's free and they don't have to do any effort just because something exists on the internet doesn't mean anyone can and should be allowed to yes there has to be a, a there has to be a a middle ground here and i do feel like if twitch makes takes a stance of saying fine we will make sure that nobody plays your music anymore uh we will penalize those that do obviously it's going to hurt us um but i think that if twitch leverages its existing base of musicians and starts releasing music that they can license to anybody on the platform basically an open license to play it anywhere on the platform um i think that would actually make the riaa think twice about this uh they could sign what will happen is they'll end up signing big ass you know artists they'll sign like t-pain or or uh or fucking soldier boy right they'll start signing these art or mike shinoda they'll start signing these artists and then all of a sudden twitch will become its own uh, your standalone record label and they can just and they only have to market to themselves that's the best part they only have to market to themselves um so anyways yeah this guy got a, a takedown and uh it was kanye west left yourself kanye west gets two i mentioned this episode what the hell uh so yes it, in this thread though I says, yeah, it says to reach out to the RAAA, the claim it for attraction. What? How? They don't care. I wish I could. It's insane to me that these laws exist in the same form and don't have and have been res revised in over 20 years. It's also upsetting that the tools that we have are so limited. Uh, and so, yeah, this is police sirens. This guy got a notice for police sirens. Okay. This is what we're talking about with even effects can be. And while I was so worried about even the uh, the alerts, the stream alerts for the scary sounds, I was I, I went to freesound.org because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't grabbing anything that could potentially be licensed because two and a half late years later, I could get nailed for DMCA takedown. Uh, same thing here. Uh, what song is this one? Let me see. Uh, 50 Cent. So 50 Cent taken down. Um, there's other, there's other examples deep in here, people talking about how they have also had takedowns, uh, and, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's gonna get worse. <laughs> These clips still exist on so many different, so many different channels. So all the new media companies can get together and be like, uh, we never let any of your, we will never let any of your music on any of our platform services again. Exactly. Yeah. Like TikTok, uh, Twitter, Instagram, um, Facebook, of course. And and uh, YouTube, well, YouTube's embedded with the uh, music industry right now, so YouTube's not going anywhere. YouTube Music, um, and, and then uh, and then Twitch, Twitch should be the first one to do it, man. Like, I really feel like they should do it. Lyric was hit as well, yeah. Soda Poppin was hit, yeah. Soda Poppin, I think they archived like all of. He had like ten years of vods. I think they archived them all, didn't they? <sighs> Look at what happened with Fleetwood Mac a song "Dreams" with the, to the TikTokers, exactly. It placed number five for the first time in 40 years. 
And what if RIA came down on TikTok the same way it's coming down on Twitch? How are you going to DMCA them for past content uh, before you enforced it? Exactly. Because it still exists is the problem. It's still, ex it's still accessible. Publicly accessible is the problem. Uh, if they were to like, okay, if you don't want your music to play, we will let everyone know. And uh, if they don't and we'll never be played again, what are the kind of reaction they would get? Uh, initially, they'll, prob they'll probably be pretty upset because the RIAA is in the business of making money. This is a power move from them saying, we want you to pay for these licenses because we want the fucking money. Uh, if Twitch can fire back and say, we have lots of musicians on our platform, we will sign them ourselves and we'll, we'll distribute that music to everybody. They'll redo the soundtrack tool to support just Twitch artists and they will continue to build and they'll buy out. They'll do what Epic does. They'll just buy out these artists. <laughs> they'll buy out these performing artists and they'll sign them and then you can use their music. And they'll just market to themselves. They have millions and hundreds of millions of viewers. Those market to themselves. Jeez, those exclusive artists. I know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But the RIAA is not done there. They're not done. Then this is why I want to talk about it today. Not necessarily just because of Vodpocalypse and the follow-up with Soundtrack, but also because they're going after fucking everything. It's like they just woke up and they're just like, whoa, have you guys heard about this internet thing? Do you guys know that there's a tool, a bunch of them, that lets you download, let me turn it, this is so bright, that lets you download any YouTube video. You guys know this, but this is the RIA waking up to this stuff. And so what do they do? They go after the YouTube downloaders. So this is GitHub. I don't think I've ever shown GitHub on, <laughs> on, a, news, on a news segment. So GitHub got a DMCA request for a, uh, for a repository that hosted YouTube-DLL. Uh, and what this, or DL, uh, basically what this it was repository does is it um, allows people, it's the base code, I guess, for people to go through and they could fork and they could change it to whatever site they're running uh, and then they can download YouTube videos. Uh, I think quite a lot of us have at some point in time or another, I know, especially if you make any kind of content, um, you would probably go and download a YouTube video, whether it's like you need the music or whether you want a video clip to feature in your own video or whatever. Uh, or if you just want to save the video in case YouTube ever disappears one day or the video disappears. So they went after them. They went and listed all of this shit. Uh, and it says, I am contacting you on behalf of the Recording Industry Association of America. I knew America was in there somewhere. Uh, and it's member rec record companies. The RIAA is a trade associate, da 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 uh, so it says, we submit that the RIA is authorized to act on behalf of its member companies in matters involving the infringement of their sound recordings, audiovisual works, etc., including enforcing their copyrights and common law rights on the internet. So, copyright violations. We have learned that your service is hosting YouTube-DL source code on its network at the following locations, among others. So they list all these locations and all these are just different. Look at porno pages. There's all these just different like video utilities. Um... And they basically say all this stuff needs to come down. Why? Because there's a, there's a couple issues that these, um, there's a couple issues here with this code is that this code is constantly updated to keep up with YouTube's uh, rotating uh, algorithm that prevents these tools from working. It's like a copyright protection, basically. You ever notice that you go to like your favorite YouTube downloader and it won't work, but then you go back like a month later and it works. Well, that's why, because the base code has not been updated and then it was. Um, then they say, we also note that the source code prominently includes sample uses of the source code, uh, the downloading of copies of our members' copyrighted sound recordings and music videos. It says, for example, the source code expressly suggests its use to copy and or distribute the following copyrighted works by members of, uh, by our member companies. And it labels or names three videos that, and you know what it looks like. You go to a site and it says, you could download any video on YouTube. And then it shows Taylor Swift shake it off video. It's like, like this one. And so that's what they're going after. They're saying, you can't do that. You're giving them the exact example of downloading uh, copyrighted material off the internet. And so they don't like that. Um, so make a YouTube DL without the words YouTube. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, so I says, I mean, there are like thousands of uh, download sites. They can't keep up with all of them. There's no way. So there's thousands of download sites, yes, but as you can see, a lot of them 
a lot and this is um, only a few of them a lot of them are based off the same code so they'd have to have a number of different code bases to operate from to prevent this from happening also github now has a uh now they're charged with having to police this because if they keep getting these cease and desists from uh you know from from the raa they could just get sued for not properly uh uh enforcing the dm the, you know the copyrighted material the theft of their own copyrighted material um i wonder if i play commercial songs will they will they ban ads <laughs> play an ad i don't know youtube dl is a tool not a site uh and it's a very efficient one yes exactly yeah youtube dot youtube dl is it's as you can see it's a bunch of sites that are built off of this code base um who said it's used to copy only their stuff yeah yeah there's that's the thing they're pointing out they're saying we know you're using this to download our stuff because you specifically point out our stuff and that's the problem so so, um, later, a couple days later, so they posted this and they say all oh, this stuff. Yeah, we got to take this thing down, whatever. So they posted this in their DMC. They have a, a log of DMC takedown requests, right? Uh, and so in a, in an IRC somewhere, the CEO, allegedly the CEO of, uh, of GitHub goes in. He says, hi folks, I'm the CEO of GitHub. We'd love to help get YouTube DL repo restored as quickly as possible. So if any maintainers who are here would like to message me, please go ahead. And the first comments are, as you'd expect, troll. <laughs> troll or not, the maintainer is in here under the nick. Da, 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 da. So um, so he says, can you prove you're the CEO? And so he basically posts on his, tw on his Twitter, Nat Friedman. Um, and he says, you know, check that out and then I'll delete it. And so if we trust, if we trust that these guys in this room, uh, all clicked on that link and they verify that it was him, then we could say that, okay, maybe this is him. Now he does say, um, he says, sorry, the repo is suspended. I want to get it back as quickly as possible. We'll message uh, somebody now. He says, we've been in communication with the repo owner to get the repo unsuspended, but they haven't answered us in a while. So I came here to try to find somebody else. And he says, just trolling. So, so he says, uh, like, what, what do you, what do you believe it would take to get the repo uh, unsuspended? The removal of the links in question, the JS interpreter, or the entire YouTube extractor? And he says, just the rolling cipher circumvention code, which is the code that I mentioned, the the anti copy whatever um, code, and the examples of how to get copyrighted material. So, what he's planning on doing is getting them to abide to to the word. Uh, of what the cease and desist letter is because it's all legalese right so it's if you buy to the word it's like okay well we removed those links and we um and we've gone ahead and also uh changed the way the cipher the cipher code works or whatever um they could probably repost it and then from there we'll see what happens obviously if you remove the uh the the, the cipher circumvention code that might pretty much eliminate the 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 use for using on youtube but i can't speak to that from a coding perspective, right? Like maybe the end user can tailor it or something. Um, but still, they're just gonna fall. Yeah, yeah, you sent us the instructions and we did exactly that. I don't know what you're mad about, but we know it's gonna be followed up. We know it's gonna be followed up. We, we've seen now so many examples of the RIAA just waking up out of a coma thinking that it's still the year 2000 and they're going around and just slamming everybody trying to get trying to get some licenses out trying to stop people from stealing their stuff um and malicious compliance is exactly what it is uh and they're not going to stop like this is not, this is not them just coming out and then go back and go back into hibernation they're going to keep going they're going to keep pushing this until something changes uh and we may not hear anything for maybe another couple months or something uh but rest assured they're not done we're going to get more of this soon or eventually um uh, just have that part somewhere else for people to download and add to the files there you go they're low on money that's why so yeah you know what that's a that's a very good point as i mentioned we were talking before the stream talking about the entertainment industry in la being in shambles right um and the recording artists like what are they doing? A lot of them are just recording shit on their own and releasing it independently, whether it's through their label or whatever. But the more people that do that, that learn how to do that shit out of their own house and, and given how easy it is to distribute your music everywhere. I mean, my fucking music is on every platform. Okay. 
So it's like you could go almost anywhere and, and find my music. Uh, it's so easy. Everyone's doing it. Why do you need RIA for? For merchandise, for touring support, all that stuff. All right, is anybody touring right now? Nobody's touring right now. Chris Rock's touring. <laughs> Smash Mouth is touring. <laughs> so yeah, this is this is for sure. R the RIAA looking at ways that they could probably try to make some money um, to uh, compensate for what they've lost through this pandemic because it's not going to end anytime soon. We're not all going to wake up tomorrow and it's fine. Probably got at least another several months <laughs> before this thing clears up. Uh, maybe more. Um, is this this is the R is this RA trying to stay alive? It very well could be. It very well could be. Uh, the more artists they fail to recruit because they're doing it themselves, uh, the more artists they fail to put out on tours where they can make a shitload of money through Ticketmaster, inflated prices. Uh, the best, the more money they lose. There's no touring, man. There's no touring right now, which means they're not getting that Ticketmaster money. They're not getting new artists. They're not getting any of that shit. So they're they're hurting right now. So I would not be surprised if all of this is the act of a cornered animal, right? Trying desperately to get some kind of traction somewhere they can make some money. Then I have to sell a yacht. I know. How can we get more money from what we have without doing much? Yeah. Artists are reaching a point where they can, uh, they don't need labels or the RIAA. This really does feel like the start of an industry shift. Exactly. We thought the same thing. We thought the same thing when Napster was a thing because any of us could put our shit up on Napster it, and, and Kazaa and LimeWire. Any of us could put our music up on any of these services. Uh, we were using, you know, forums to promote our stuff. And, and now we have social media where now all the forums have all conversed into like three major platforms. So now you have a place to go and promote your stuff and you're, you're amongst other artists. Even Twitch is, is, is one of those platforms. Um, this was a Larens. All the biggest money earners uh, for them have the name recognition to release their own stuff from home. Spanish for the 1900s, one year, eight months. COVID is the same thing. Yeah, it feels like it. I mean, I'm sure. Uh, trying to show their worth to undecided artists. How do those independent artists protect themselves against piracy? Oh, piracy. Oh, man. You know what's funny? That's something that could probably scare nobody right now. I don't think you could go up to any 16 year old who is making just some fucking sick beats and just say, aren't you worried about piracy? He's gonna be like, bitch, no. <laughs> He's gonna be like, who the fuck? No, like get my music out there. Like, yeah, that's, that's just the, the younger, the, the older we get, the more savvy the younger ones get with tech, right? They understand this shit. I mean, obviously we do too. Like we grew up with Napster. We grew up with LimeWare, Kazaa, the Audio Galaxy 3000 or whatever the fuck it was called. We grew up with all of these things. So we know uh, that piracy just shows you more music. And in turn, you end up buying more CDs. Or now, now the services, you pay for the services. Now you don't get, uh, you, you pay uh, Spotify their monthly premium so you don't get ads. So there's ways that you can, or you can watch your favorite video on YouTube, music video on YouTube, you get an ad for it. So yeah, there's, the industry evolved in that sense, but the RAA is stuck. They're stuck. The best way to combat piracy is to make it easier to buy uh, to buy it than to steal it. Exactly. You stopped giving a shit when I was 11. Remember the good old days of searching the net for index pages? Oh, yeah. Or a lack of index pages. That was always the best. You get the directory tree. <laughs> What's this slash images folder? Ooh. <laughs> you found so much stuff through there. Um, so, yeah. Moving on. See, I legit laughed at you. you couldn't download a car. Yeah, because you had all the cat files. Exactly. If it was bad for the kids, they wouldn't care. Too hooked on that social media fix. Yeah, all they care about is, like, can you get my music into TikTok, right? Which, honestly, by the age of 16, I'm sure that most musicians already know how to distribute their own music and get it on services like TikTok uh, or services like you know Instagram or whatever. I have a checkbox that I click in my in my distributor my digital distributor website uh i check a box and it will automatically monetize on youtube or uh which is unchecked uh or on um, facebook and uh instagram and a couple other sites sites which is checked of course <laughs> yes yeah, so if you if you put my music in on facebook 
I'm going to make some money off it, okay? Um, I don't see the upside to it at all. While streamers are going to pay for licensing it, uh, instead of just uh, using free licensed music, what indie creator is going to turn down free exposure to thousands of people? Exactly. Twitch has a winner here. Like, they have, the, they have a winning hand here. They can definitely reach out to all of these artists on this platform, and there are lots of them, uh, and and just license their music. Just sign them to a label or something. And, they don't even have, and the thing is, they don't even have to pay them that much, which sounds shitty to say, but really, they don't have to pay them that much. A lot of artists are just like, well, I was making zero before, and I can make X amount now, which could be $100 uh, one time, which is what I got for APB, for my song on APB, $100 one time. Uh, and they might take it. It's like one song, put it up there, everybody gets to listen to it, and then they can make more music and all that. Who knows, but still, they could license this stuff for probably far less than $100, honestly. $100! I know, $100! Whoa! An entire Benji! That's right, I got a whole hundo for that song. You had that song on repeat when you played APB? I'm sure that song got, oh man, probably millions of plays in APB. And I got 100 bucks. I'm not mad about it at all because so many people found my shit. So many people through APB. You think I'm a licensed artist? You need to hire people, man. Riot did it. Riot, the company who hasn't managed to release a single new game in, or well, hadn't for like a decade or whatever, maybe not a decade, but still, they figured out how to do it. They're licensing their own stuff. But yes, it is more complicated than that for sure, Freycore. Absolutely. Um, it's honestly one of the only, few, one of the few good songs. Which song was this? Uh, Wake, WK, WK from the Overmind album. Uh, negative pH, negative pH, WK. Moving on. Moving on. Speaking of, speaking of downloading, did you guys know that you can now stream? They'll try to stop me. Boom, 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 boom. Now listen, I'm gonna stop here because uh, I have a feeling if I play this whole video, it's gonna get flagged, okay? So I'm gonna fast forward here. So this is Control. The cloud version. Uh, streaming to a Switch near you. Yeah. Let me pull up this article here. If you have a Switch, you could download a free five minute demo. Right now, if you wanted to. Uh, here's a demo here. A demo hey, of the, uh, and we are we'll mute it here, just so you can see him playing. Let me fast forward. But he's playing, it's streaming, it's it's streaming just from the cloud. Control cloud vision version, that's right. Uh, this is the first game to be streamed on a Switch. We've been focused so much on Stadia and xCloud and all these other services, and Nintendo just swoops in with this like, Oh yeah, we got it. We got a game, but this time we're gonna. You could just stream it. <laughs> is that is that like a is that a is that a big deal? Is that a? We just thought it might be cool, right? Uh, I tried it yesterday. It worked way better than I expected. There you go. <laughs> Nintendo's like surprise, motherfuckers. Exactly. Uh, there has been streaming in Japan for like a year now. Well, their infrastructure is probably better than a lot of other countries, especially the U.S. Um, why does this why does this work better than Stadia? I I don't know. Who cares about hardware limitations? Just stream it! I may have zero interest in actual Xbox, but I damn impressed with how accessible Xbox is making shit. Love Game Pass. Yes, Game Pass is very nice. Tried it yesterday. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there has been streaming. Let's say a stable connection on the one on the Switch. Yes, so that's the biggest struggle is a stable connection on a Switch. And let me tell you, if you have a mesh network, it's not going to happen, bud. It's not going to happen. If you have a regular Wi-Fi, you probably be all right. But anything else is probably not going to happen. Uh, but, you know, you can always put it in docket and you can play it that way. So, uh, overall, the reviews are that it works pretty well. It works pretty well. Uh, there are some caveats. Some, some, you know, some caveats. It's going to cost you a little bit. Uh, this is, what do you say, 5G just launched, just reached to my phone almost everywhere. I need to see how Game Pass handles at work. Ooh. Yeah, boy, I'm looking forward to 5G and not having any signal still. No signal out here. So the, uh, where is my thing? Here we go. So you could download it. You could download a test and test. When you go to download it on the, on your Switch, there is a, um, uh, 
there's going to be a note, uh, an app that will download and test your internet connection to make sure that you can actually support this game. Uh, and then you could go through and actually download the game and, and play it. Uh, now, you could play a demo of it for free. Uh, I believe it's a five-minute demo. If you want to play the whole game, you have to pay for the Access Pass, which is $39.99. So an Access Pass of $39.99, I think that is, I think that's annual. Uh, that part at home is like, let me look at, let me, let me see, price at $39.99. I believe it may be annual. I could be wrong though. It might be a one-time purchase. Uh, but it's the Access Pass is going to support not just Control, but in the future also um, Hitman 3. So you'll be able to stream Hitman 3, the cloud version, to your uh, to your Switch. So yes, this is Switch just basically coming out of nowhere and announcing that they're going to have streaming on on one of the most popular, probably the most popular console in the world, uh, and then they're going to just 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 start supporting cloud streaming. Um, sounds like EA passing. Yeah, maybe aren't there rumors of Resident Evil 3 as, as well? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> so, yes, I mean, I didn't get my Switch for this. I got my Switch for the hundreds of hours on, I'm on planes during the year. Well, that's fine, because it could also do that. <laughs> and now it could also do this. That's what that's what Nintendo's going for. They're making the Switch basically the everything gaming system. It sounds like a pass. You could play the game and not pay for it and just pay. Yes, so you pay for the pass, and the game comes with it free. Um, Hitman 3 will also come on the pass uh you do have to have a nintendo online account nintendo still needs their money so you still have to pay that three dollars a month in order to have that nintendo online access in order to play this so people still fly on planes i know what 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 are you doing on a plane so yes Nintendo Switch is kind of it has entered the market for uh, for cloud streaming games. This time next year, which we might actually have a new Switch by then, uh, we'll probably see a ton of games support this feature. A ton of games support this feature. Uh, PS5, Xbox, PS5, Xbox, Nintendo. What's up, bitches? Exactly. This past like Nintendo curated stream uh, stream pass, or is it uh, different companies membership? That part I don't know. All it says at the bottom, read right the fine print here. It does say access pass. So it says, uh, it's, da, 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 this free launcher application and the purchasable access pass are required. Pricing can be found on Nintendo access. Da, da, da. So, so it's all it's saying is that it's required to play. Nothing else. So I have not bought it. I didn't buy it to test it for you guys. Uh, I think I, I'm, I might have control on PCs. I'll, I don't want to, you know, pay thirty nine ninety nine to get it again on Switch. Um, but speaking of, speaking of, and this is kind of going in a weird direction. Nintendo Switch. Um, this redditor has a really, really, really interesting theory about Mario Odyssey. He says. Like many of you, I fired up Mario Odyssey in honor of the game's three-year anniversary, and as I started playing, a thought struck me. Mario is dead in this game. So, consider! Mario is defeated by Bowser, Bowser in the opening cinematic and plummets to the ground from high atop an airship. This is a fatal fall. And when Mario awakens, he's in the ethereal black and white world populated by ghosts. Much like the afterlife. Says the main game mechanic, tossing Cappy to capture other characters, is essentially possession, like a ghost or spirit would do. And there are 14 worlds in the game, numerology, all this stuff, whatever. Uh, and then it says the brutals are re represent representations of the moon rabbit motif in Asian culture. The moon rabbit is said to brew the elixir of life, which can raise the dead on the moon. Uh, the first creature you possess in Mario Odyssey is a frog. In Japanese, the word for frog, kairu, is, or kairu, is the same word as return, as in returning a beloved character, i.e. Mario, from an untimely demise. So, did you find it odd that Luigi and Yoshi aren't initially in the game? Well, it makes sense now. It's because Mario is dead. <laughs> People got way too much time on their heads. <laughs> I saw this and I was like, I need to show everybody this because it's such a good theory. Like, it's such a good theory. He's dead. Isn't that crazy? 
It works. It works. Aliens. <laughs> Snowpiercer. It's a sequel of Snowpiercer. <laughs> Is this like the Final Final Fantasy uh, 8 sequel is Dead Theory? Oh, I didn't know that. Squall is Dead Theory. I didn't know that. Damn drugs. This is wild. The high, yeah, high deep thought moment. Exactly. Yeah, that's a pretty good theory. Actually, I didn't read the comments here. Let me see. I think the bigger question is if uh, Mario uh, is if Mario in Odyssey is Mario or if it is the hat controlling Mario. Anything in the game that gets the hat put on their head is controlled by Mario. But wouldn't the hat be controlling Mario since you control other creatures you have the hat on? Hmm, what does this guy say? Then why I keep dying? <laughs> this guy's ruining my narrative here. <laughs> then why I keep dying? <laughs> Listen, there's an article on fandom.com saying this from back in 2017. Oh shit, does it really? Oh, awesome. Um, you want whatever this guy is having. To three years ago, so so somebody somebody did on on uh, on the Gamespot forums said the same thing. Yeah, see, now now I mean if, uh, there's there's probably videos I'm sure already out there. If it's already been well, if it's not, if it was on that if it was on Gamespot forums, uh, I don't know how many people frequent the Gamespot forums, but uh, uh, this was two days ago, and so I wonder if now we'll start seeing now oh, let's revitalize here, and now we have all have time, plenty of time on our hands to make content, right? Uh, I wonder if we'll start seeing more um, more people uh, uh or making making videos is like oh is mario dead it was probably already out there actually uh because it's two days ago and youtubers are fast if if mario is dead then bowser is canon you wish it's like discussions with my friends i have about star wars star trek etc it's just the, the mario version pretty much pretty much so speaking of things that are dead Fall Guys started a new Instagram account and I followed it because I wanted to see how many uh, how many followers they would get because they are a very it's a very big game and they're pimping it all over the place. Let me see. Where is their Twitter account? Let me see. Fall Guys uh, is Twitter. Let me pull it up real quick. They have 1.6 million followers. Now Real quick, real quick, don't look it up. How many followers do you think they have on Instagram since they started pimping it? Just, just a lot of number. 1.6 million Twitter followers. How many do you think they have on Instagram? I see three. I see 20K. I see a thousand. At least three. At least three. May, at least three. They definitely have at least three. 20K, 10 million, 3.3 million, 100K. Okay, we're getting crazy here. All right. Now you guys is making shit up. Blood chill, 10K. Oh, blood chill's pretty close. They have 10,700 followers. Listen. I understand that maybe Fall Guys on Instagram is not the most impressive and most viral type of content you could get on Instagram, right? Not, maybe not really geared towards that. But I am surprised that of the 1.6 million followers that they have on Twitter, that this is all they can muster on Instagram. I have more followers than Fall Guys on Instagram. And I might actually have more followers for a long time because they had a huge boost at the beginning with a lot of followers that hit them and then just trickle, just basically nothing. Um, this made curious on uh, Twitch. Yes, so we're talking about that too. Instagram is for sensor cities. Beans don't have titties. I mean, they could always just they could paint them in. They can they can have OnlyFans. See, that would have been better if they made a free OnlyFans. That would have been hilarious. But they're trying to cater to kids, so maybe they shouldn't do that. <laughs> maybe I'm not the right guy to ask for that kind of stuff. So I went to Sully Gnome to see how they're doing. Right? I pulled the numbers for the last 90 days. Just so happens the game's only been out for about 90 days. <laughs> it's like if you look at this, let me go to 180 days. You can see there's really nothing before this. So they've been out for about 90 days, uh, and you can see it's a Staggering loss. They were cruising right there, just cruising. People playing and watching their game. And then this is this is people playing it, by the way, on the right hand side. Uh then the fall off happens, and then they get uh I believe this is the season, the season two spike that they had, or maybe it was season one. Um compared to Among Us. It I just so happened to have that 
up right here. Specifically, so we can compare the two. This is Among Us's 90 day outlook here. 90 day, look at this. It's hard to say definitively that Among Us killed Fall Guys. It's easy to say suggestively, just like, oh yeah, are you kidding me? This is a bean game, this is a bean game. Yeah, they did it. That's what happened. They're two very different games. But the numbers show that the timing of that was pretty... pretty telling. I actually wonder what would happen if Among Us had an Instagram account. Do they have an Instagram account? They haven't pimped it, not that I've seen. But if Among Us made an Instagram account, how many followers they would get? Because they right now are still cruising. They're still cruising in that first way. People are playing the game. Look at this. This is steady. And there's spikes. Sure, there's spikes. But this is, in general, this is the kind of, this is what you want to see. This is steady. And we look at Fall Guys and it's a steady decline. Among Us is also super accessible, uh, being free on phone. It runs on any potato. It's true. Very true. Uh, what about Hades and Phasophobia? Well, when we talk about those games, we'll look at those up. <laughs> the AOC bump. Yeah, what was the AOC bump then? That was, uh, well, not here. <laughs> Probably this one right here, October 21st. That seems about right. Yeah, about nine days ago. Yep. Yeah. It's mainly because AOC played the game. Mm, no. No, this game was big up up even through this one. It's funny. The the uh the bump that it got from AOC playing didn't actually change the trajectory too much that we can see. Right? There was a spike and then it went back down to where it was. Um yeah, she played the game because it was already huge, exactly. So it wasn't it had anything to do with AOC. Um what did you link here? Uh, oh you oh his Instagram account, uh, the, the dev's Instagram account. Let me open this up real quick. Have they have they pimped this anywhere? 3,944. I wonder if I'm following these guys. I wonder if don't look at my suggested. Don't look at my suggestions. It's all titties. Um, I wonder if they've pimped this anywhere. Like did a big push. Like when when Fall Guys did, they put a they did a huge push. I wonder if they were to do something similar. I mean, first of all, I don't think that their dev team is as active on social media at like anywhere near what Falls Guys. Fall Guys has like a dedicated social team. You know, they have a dedicated social team and they're just like memeing all over the fucking place. Uh, I don't see that same type of push from among us. Uh, that being said, there's still a respectable number of, uh, of followers. Let's see. I got, I do got new messages. That's right. Let's see. Streamers, and YouTubers picked up among us over fall guys would probably be a big part of it. Uh, among us only has like three devs. Yep. I don't know what, uh, what, uh, fall guys has, but I'm sure there's more. Uh, let me get, let me get that suggested list. <laughs> just go, just go look at who I follow on Instagram. It's easy. Be careful about, uh, social media and Twitch. Oh, I, that's why I go to the pages and not to my feed. Okay. My feed is so bad. That's bad news right there. We don't do that. Uh, I honestly question where Fall Guys would be if Among Us didn't come, become a huge thing. I wonder the same thing. I honestly wonder the same thing. You know what? I'm going to look this up just because he said, even though I don't think these games really relate, I'm going to look it up anyways. Hades and Phasmophobia, because even I did that. I played Hades and I played Phasmophobia. Huh? Uh, ph phasmophobia. There it is. Now I'm curious. Oh, we can't really compare these. Hades got... Yeah, no, this is... Not, yes, I'm, I'm sorry, Teddy. It's not a good comparison. But we do see uh, uh, that Phasmophobia is still doing really well. They're trending downwards. I would like to check this after, after the holidays, though. After uh, Halloween, to see where they're at. Hmm. Hades also had a lot of less content. Well, they, 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 right now? Anyways, no, go back to Fall Guys and Among Us. Um, yeah, I, I just, I, I am, I don't know if Among, if Fallout, uh, sorry, Fallout Guys, fuck, if Fall Guys can ever dig themselves out of this hole. Uh, Fall Guys would have petered off just like it has with Among Us Rising. I was bored of it a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, we played it. We played it for a, a couple sub nights. And I think by the second night, I was like, cool, we're done. <laughs> like, we're good. I'm good. I'm good. It was exciting. First time playing it. The music is hype. The music is great. Uh, and the and the action was fantastic. And and then you, once you do it a few times, you just, you're just kind of like, okay, cool. 
Most Khan is everywhere from all the streamers like YouTube. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, Fall Guys content was everywhere too. Let's not forget that. Fall Guys content was everywhere. Like they were, they were like, they were just mainstream hype. And then Among Us happened. Uh, Fall Guys is one play wonder that never changes. Among Us is always a new experience because people make that experience. They have to sit and watch for 10 minutes. Oh my God. Yes, that's true. That's true. They need a better system for that. I don't know what they could do, but. Um, <laughs> era. Era, you're a little biased. <laughs> uh, Among Us is player driven content. Fall Guys is game driven. That's right. But hey, they both got beans. One bean game is just doing better than the other. I do wonder what the next bean game is going to be. What's going to dethrone Among Us? We only have an attention span of several months. If we look at this, if we look at this chart of Among Us here, we can see that they are trending downward in number of people that are streaming it. Um, the viewership is still maintaining pretty well. Uh, so, and actually, let me go, let me change the 30 days here. Yeah, we could see, I guess it is trending down on, on viewership. Hard, hard to really, I feel like the spike really does not help it any. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I do wonder, are we at the end of Among Us in terms of, you know, how many people are playing it and what is going to be the next one that comes out? Say, so I wish they had games, entire groups, like four, like 15 uh, groups of us. Yep. Uh, Among Us, uh, hat menu. What? Oh, <laughs> phasmophobia with beans. Exactly. League of Bean Gens. That's because you don't stream enough Among Us, Mike. Stop the news. <laughs> I know, I know. Gosh, I don't fall behind. I'm so sorry. I mean, I love Among Us. I think it's great. And even I, even I have just like taken a break from it. I play it like once, once a week or so. I feel bad because I know you guys are like so good. I love playing with you guys. Trust me, I fucking love it. It's so good. That's why I saved those VODs. That's why I like on that playlist that I posted on YouTube to save all the VODs that I had. It's all Among Us VODs, because it's my favorite. One of these years, I go back and watch it and watch Dominius stab me in the fucking back. Speaking of, Among Us, I would like to recognize Victor for some of the art that he's made. He calls it streaming an image. He actually made a uh, an Imgur, uh, an Imgur channel here. I'll check the side here. Uh, an Imgur page where... He has basically these summaries of like streams that we play and he puts together these these comics uh there's a couple you have actually not seen but they're they're so good uh and they're so simple they're just simple but man they really they really do capture the moments really really well uh victor i don't know if you're watching right now but i mean i just want to tell you again thank you for putting the work into this and to summarize these things like this is stuff that i can look back on later be like oh i, I remember this look at Dimmy. Don't you worry, Mike. I'll protect you if you die. I die. Remember? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is great. Fucking love it. Fucking love it. I haven't seen this one yet. So, yeah, this is fantastic. Where are you going to run? Just accept your fan <laughs> guns chasing after sprinkles. Uh, oh, quick as Noxie's turn. Voter out. I'm sorry, did you? I can't do that. It's so good. So good. So, Victor, you're not here right now, but if you do happen to catch the VOD or if you had to catch the YouTube channel, I want to say thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. I Some of you guys make some fantastic, like, I guess, what do they call it, like tertiary content or secondary content to the stuff that I make. And, and I got to tell you, man, like, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Um, Uncle Chat. Uncle Chat is coming through. Appreciate it. Thank you. Link, please. I'll put it in right now. I'll put it in right now. You guys go check it out. Boom. Oops, that's the wrong one. <laughs> I don't know what that was, but that was definitely not it. There you go. There you go. Go and check it out yourself. Um, lastly, very, very last before we get out of here. Uh, now, you know, I'm not a hardware guy. I'm not a hardware guy. I mean, like, I, I follow the hardware trends when it's time for me to build a computer. But otherwise, I don't give a fuck, right? Once I build something, I'm very practical. Does it work? Yes. I don't need to pay attention to what other people have anymore. But we do have... Some numbers have come in comparing the NVIDIA RTX 3090 to the AMD RX 6900 XT that was uh, that was announced, I think, earlier this week. And as you can see here, the numbers on the AMD 6900 XT are much, much higher than the numbers on the NVIDIA. So keep that in mind when you make your next purchase. 
All right. The numbers are clearly, the graph shows clearly, clearly bigger. Thank you so much for hanging out today. Thank you, chat, for being here, for hanging out, being my co-host. You guys are the best. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My name, <laughs> bigger is always better. <laughs> my name is Mike B.A.K. Fody. This is the news, and I'm going to leave.